receptions, receiving TDs, um, and receiving yards last season. So tell me this, Mad Dog, what does this mean for Aaron Rodgers now not having Devontae Adams? Well, here's the thing. If Rodgers is this great, he should be able to figure out a way to get these other receivers involved and still be a very effective quarterback. Let's not forget last year's Thursday night game in Arizona when Adams couldn't play and they beat the Cardinals. And he used the rest of his arsenal and they won a game. That's when Murray threw the interception at the end when he was trying to throw the ball to A.J. Green. So if Rodgers is this great, and Stevie and I are on the same page on Rodgers, you know, he's got to get to this next level. Yeah. They have the, they have draft picks. They got other receivers. We, we show Everybody saw the highlight. When Lazard was wide open on third and 11 in the cold in Green Bay against San Francisco, and he forced the board Adams the incomplete pass, and then the Niners came down and kicked the field goal. If he threw the board to Lazard, the Packers would have won the game. And Lazard was wide open at midfield. So this gives Rodgers a chance to spread the ball around a little bit, have a little more confidence in the younger receivers, don't have that bad body language which sometimes he does. He gets frustrated and he walks off the field with his shoulders sagged. And all. Yeah. Let's go out there now and let's get everybody else incorporated with your team. Let's show some confidence with them. Let's go back to them and throw the ball to them and have a couple of drop passes. They have the, the, they have the Raider top pick, so they have the 22nd pick. I think it's the 22nd mm -hmm. pick. They can maybe draft the receiver. If Rodgers is worth $50 million, here make do with what... He, hey, listen, Brady got the Super Bowls with lousy receivers for a long time. If Rodgers is this good in an awful division, in yeah. a bad conference, he'll figure something out with the other receivers he has to work with. Stephen A., what do you think? Well, I think his legacy is on the line because some of the changes that have been made are because of him. Uh, the reality of the situation is that the National Football League has a hard salary cap. Now, it's not the players' fault. The owners, being the cheap misers that they are, have a hard salary cap, and they leave it for the players to fight amongst themselves as to the pot that is available to them. But nevertheless, knowing that those rules were in place, Aaron Rodgers did what any almost anybody would do. He took as much as the bag as he could possibly get. But with that comes a responsibility to get the job done. Now, it's not just on his shoulders. I'm sick and tired of Matt LaFleur being oh, raved about, for crying out loud. If, right. Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers wasn't your quarterback, what would you do? What would you be? Because we've seen, the, we've seen two years ago, him not have him take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands and on fourth down showing no guts whatsoever and being a prisoner and a hostage to the analytics, which made no sense at that particular moment because if you're using the eyeball test, you leave the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hands. He's your franchise yep. player. He's the face of your franchise. You say to him, okay, this is what we pay you for. Get the damn job done, period. And Matt LaFleur took the ball out of his hands and prevented him from doing that. And then this year, the special, the special teams didn't just show up didn't just fail to show up against San Francisco. They were horrid all year. How the hell do you have 17 weeks? This is your job. Matt LaFleur doesn't have to run for any first downs or touchdowns. He doesn't have to catch any touchdown passes. He doesn't have to block for anybody. He doesn't have to sack anybody. He doesn't have to intercept the football. Your job is to damn coach. And somehow, some way, Matt LaFleur allowed the entire season to go on where he never, ever fixed the special teams. Week to week to week, they were consistently considered one of, if not the worst special teams in football. Matt LaFleur did nothing about it, and at the, as a re end result, it came back to bite them. And somehow, some way, we turn around, this coordinator is gone, this coach is gone, this coach is gone, but Matt LaFleur still stays, okay? This man, as far as I'm concerned, is living off the greatness of Aaron Rodgers, which is why he did everything but get on his knees and pray to the skies in front of the masses that Aaron Rodgers stay in New York. I'm sorry, in Green Bay. That is what happened with Matt LaFleur. Then you go, and under your watch, you draft Jordan Love instead of, I, of drafting some additional weapons to help buffer the team. Mike go down is one of the worst picks ever because you just signed Aaron Rodgers. So not only has Jordan Love been sitting on the bench for three years, he's going to be sitting on the bench at least another three years. Well, go figure that out. So all of this stuff, it's not just about Aaron Rodgers. It's about Coach LaFleur, too. But in the mm -hmm. end, it's about Aaron Rodgers. You the one that got the bag. You took the money. You got to show up and find a way to get it done. Or well, we're going to remember that you did it. Uh, that's uh, Steve's right, 100%. Can you imagine Belichick with his little milk, milk and cookies, uh, Nantucket, watching that game with the Packers with their special teams, blocked field goals, blocked punts, kickoffs back to the 50-yard line? His you dog. Think, his yeah, dog, dog yeah, his dog. You know, he's, he's, he's funny dog. with the dog. Or Lombardi yeah. from upstairs. Yeah. Can you imagine him watching that game and said, hold on out. We lost a playoff game in our building in bad weather against a warm-weather team because of special teams? Uh, what? 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.